Hi everyone, welcome back to Energeny TV. It's Jenny here. Today I interviewed Rachel from World Relief. She is my volunteer coordinator. We had a very enriching conversation. She talked about her past experiences that led her to work at World Relief. And also she has a message towards the end of the video to those who are not supportive of refugees and immigrants. Additionally, we had unstable internet connection throughout the interview, so I hope you understand the small glitches you might see throughout the video. Thank you. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Jenny. <laughs> Thank you so much for agreeing to do the interview for Energeny TV. We're so excited to have you. Could you please introduce yourself to our viewers? Sure. So my name is Rachel Rasmussen. I, um, I work at World Relief. I'm the Youth Services Coordinator. Um, so that's how I know Jenny. She's a tutor with me. Yeah. And um, while we were, or when I was preparing for our interview, I realized that it's been almost a year since we've known each other, because I started to volunteer at World Relief around the summertime last last year. Um, so that was surprising. But the funny thing is that we've actually never met in person because <laughs> of COVID, true. right? Yeah, that is funny. That's true. So that that was kind of funny. Yeah. But yeah um, you mentioned that you are a youth services coordinator at World Relief. Could you tell us a little bit more specifically about what you do at World Relief? Sure. Um, yeah. So I run our K twelve program, and I also supervise our young adult mentoring program. Um, that's pretty much the extent of our like youth services, young adult services at World Relief. I work at World Relief Chicago. We also have two other offices in the Chicago area and a bunch of others in the country and not sorry in Chicago land there's one in DuPage and there's one in Aurora and there's one in Chicago in Albany Park so I work at the Albany Park one um but yeah there's lots of other World Relief offices throughout the country and internationally but um yeah so in our K-12 program we do primarily three things we do school support which is basically like going with parents to parent-teacher conferences if they need, helping people enroll their kids in school. Um, sometimes teachers will call us with questions or they can't get a hold of the family or that sort of thing. Um, we also do tutoring. So we have, um, throughout COVID, it's been virtual, but next fall it'll be in person again. We match tutors with students and they just work together for an hour to a week um, on the kids' homework or just um, playing games or reading or whatever else, um, if the student doesn't have any homework that day or has finished it. Um, and then the third thing we do is summer program. So we run a summer program every summer um, with our with our kids, which is really fun. Um, yeah, it's gonna have to be online again this year, but I'm excited. Um, yeah, and World Relief works with refugees and immigrants. Um, well, so specifically with like refugees, asylees, asylum seekers, um, and we have a lot of like other case management, employment services, that sort of thing, but I get to work with the kids. Yay. <laughs> awesome. So um, I'm really curious about your past experiences that led you to work at World Relief. So could you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. So I um, grew up in Tanzania and Kenya. Um, I was in Tanzania until I was 10 and then we moved to Kenya and I was there until I graduated from high school, um, came to, to college in the U.S. Um, I went to Northwestern, not very far from Chicago. Um, so yeah, living, living in East Africa um, and obviously not being originally from East Africa. My parents are from Minnesota. Um, was just uh it was i mean i loved it it was my home but it was there was a lot of like cross-cultural stuff and i also went to an international school and that sort of thing um 
So cross-cultural communication and that sort of thing was always really important and interesting to me. Um, and also there's a lot of, there's a lot of refugees and immigrants in East Africa, like from um, some things happening in DRC, there's a lot going into Uganda and a lot coming into Kenya from Somalia and other places. So um, I think I had a lot of exposure to like the refugee narrative and that sort of thing. Um, and was was passionate about like helping people adjust to their new to their new situation. Um, and then also, yeah, moving to the States myself for college was like not that easy. It was a lot of, there was a lot of uh, cultural things to learn mm -hmm. um, and adjust to. Um, and so I think I also just like feel people on that. And I'm like, yeah, that's hard. And, and I like, I mean, my parents are from here. I have family here. I would come here for the summer every few years. And so it like wasn't completely new to me, but it was still like, well, this is hard. <laughs> um, so, yeah, those are a few, a few That's reasons. That's a very unique story. Um, I'm just kind of curious about like how you felt as you were growing up in Africa, because obviously I feel like you would realize that you're really different from everybody else. Um, so what were your thoughts and like how, how did you feel growing up in, in an environment where you were very different from everybody else yeah so um especially where we were in tanzania was um i mean like everyone in our neighborhood was tanzanian our school was like half tanzanian half indian students um so but it was like a british school so the teachers were british so it was like a weird power dynamic where it was like all these white people who were like the teachers and um and they did have some teachers who weren't white but primarily um and the students were people of color. And so it was like, yeah, it was definitely interesting dynamics. Um, also just, I mean, like we we lived right across from the church and um, the church was entirely in Swahili and that sort of thing. So just some of those things too, where it was like, I wasn't completely fluent in Swahili. So sometimes it was hard to like track. Um, and yeah, it was, it was also white, means that you like are rich and that sort of thing so lots of people asking you for money and that kind of thing and like we we did have more money than like most of the most of our neighbors um even though in the u.s we would have been considered to not have not have very much money um so i think it was just like an interesting yeah power dynamic where it wasn't really that possible to like fit in and just be normal uh, which i think i really wanted um for a long time so yeah, I think that was, that was an interesting experience.